There we go. This is part eight, page 573, special senses, and we're involved now with both hearing and balance. And uh, we just got through with this diagram right here. And um, I want to bring to your attention the little workup on the internal ear here. Uh, the internal ear described um, as this the labyrinth, the maze, and that's the bony process. Then within the maze itself, uh, we have the both the bony and the membranous labyrinth. So the bony labyrinth is um, got a configuration of membrane within it. So just uh, lining the bony uh, labyrinth, we have uh, paralymph, P-E-R-I, and then uh, the membranous labyrinth contains the endolymph, and there it's uh, spelled out for you. This is the endolymph right here, and uh, up here we have the paralymph. This is sodium rich, and then this next one here, the endolymph is calcium rich. Okay, and so there is a sodium calcium pump throughout the system here that's keeping the sodium out into the paralymph and the uh, potassium in to the endolymph. And um, so it's worthwhile being fascinated by that, in my humble opinion. Uh, there's a space beyond this called the vestibule. And the vestibule also has its labyrinthian, or shall we say the, um, how shall I say, the membranous aspect of it. Let's take a look here. So this is the vestibule, and this vestibule has its uh, areas here are called a utricle and a saccule. So let's take a look. Over here we have the utricle of the, uh, the vestibule and the saccule. Uh, both of these are involved with static equilibrium. Okay, so we have innervation of these receptors right there. And then out here we have the semicircular canals. Okay, so uh, let's press on then to this picture right here where they've actually, uh, they're going to begin us in the realm of hearing. So here we have the um, cochlear nerve, which is the half of, you know, a portion of the vestibular cochlear cranial nerve 8. So this is just cochlear. And you can see that it's divided up here. Now this is a very difficult picture to look at. Uh, and ultimately, we're going to want to look at one single turn of the snail shell and cut it through. And above, we're going to be noticing that there is a tube here called the scala vestibula. Then below, there is also a tube called the scala tympani. Above and below, these tubes are actually connected to one another at the very end of their tubes. Okay, in between is something called the scala media. Okay, this is also called the cochlear duct, but some people like to call it the scala media. It's filled with uh, potassium-rich endolymph. And this is where the connections are here. Here we have bare nerves, nerve endings. And so the nerves are going to be functional within the endolymph. And these up here are just going to be carrying signals from um, the vibration. Here is the vibration here. When there is a sound, it's carried through the air, ultimately through the liquids of the body as well, as compressions and rarefactions. Okay? Sound waves, in other words. And um, I'm bringing you quickly over to this page over here because I want you to take a look at how we have our endolymphs hooked up here. They're hooked up to the oval window, and here they've sort of unrolled. Isn't that cute? They've unrolled the cochlea. So you can see here that the uh, stapes is hooked up to the oval window, which is hooked up here to this upper division of uh, this cochlea. It's called the scala vestibuli. Notice that it comes all the way out, and then it actually it hooks up here at what's called the helicotrema at the end with the scala uh, vestibuli, or I'm sorry, the tympani. Out here is the, uh, the tympani. So this is the scala vestibuli. This is the scala tympani. They're interconnected, right? So their fluid is the same. It's paralymph. But then in between, we have this portion here, and this portion is the potassium rich, Notice that sound waves will have an impact at a particular spot. So that's an important detail here. Now they've actually unrolled it perfectly here down here. And here we have a high-pitched sound like you would hear from a flute. 
and um, so that's the high-pitched sound. It has a short wave length, and therefore it's going to impact the system here close to the oval window. If we have a medium uh, sort of uh, type of sound, maybe from uh, a, viola, a viola or a cello or something like this, somebody who's in the mid-range, alto or tenor, then they will be deflecting the uh, system right here. And then way out here, if you have the bass sounds, the bass sounds are the longest, slowest waves, and they will uh, deflect something out here close to the helicotrema. Okay, so I wanted you to see that. Let's go back now to the details of this picture right here. What we're looking at here is we're looking at the setup at any given spot. You know, so we're taking a cross cut, right, through the uh, cochlea. And it has three tubes, as noted before. You might want to go over this a few times. Now, let's take a really, really, really close look here. And the idea is that this is the business spot right here. The business spot is referred to as the spiral organ of Corti. The spiral organ of Corti. It's spiraling around, and it's carrying the nerve endings. And it's also carrying the transduction uh, areas here for receptors of sound. Okay, so let's go to the blow-up over here. Here's the magnification of that spot inside the scala media. Notice that we have this big overhang here. Okay, this is this big tectorial membrane. Notice if you look very, very closely that there's little hair cells right there on the end of these. Uh, there's uh, hairs on the end of the hair cells. And uh, when the hairs deflect up against the overhang here, they're going to produce a sound. There's, there's going to be transduction and there's going to be an action potential. So that means sodium is going to cross uh, the membrane. We're going to get a depolarization. We're going to get an action potential and we'll have something called sound. There's little overtone possibilities here because there's many places where there are little hairs. Okay, where does the actual signal come from? It's a deflection of the basal membrane, or the basilar membrane, excuse me. So the basilar membrane actually goes through a little sine wave, boink, boink, like that. When we have, if this is the spot where the wavelength is going to hit, then it's going to go boom, boom, like that. And it's going to force the, the hair cells to push their little hairs against the tectorial membrane, which is normally very stable. Okay, so we get the deflection, we get the sound. And that's the deal. It's the call. It's called the spiral organ of Corti. Okay, the spiral organ of Corti. They don't like to use eponyms these days in modern undergraduate uh, academic biology because these are mostly dead white men, and uh, we would like to sell. I will bring to your attention all of the women of science as much as I possibly can because I celebrate them personally. And um, so there were not specifically so much women of science until the 20th century, but I, I'm a big celebrator of women of science, so I'm going to bring that to your attention. But we do need to know the, the nomenclature, so I will use complete nomenclature all the time. Okay, so now we've figured out how this works, and then um, we're going to press on into other little details here. Um, let's be reminded again that if we were to unroll the... Um, the uh, cochlea, that we would be able to see the scala vestibula, the scala tympani, they would meet up at the helicotrema, and that we would have the um, interior portion here called scala media. Okay, and so then we're going to press on now into how this uh, innervation is set up. Um, basically, you can see here that we're going to go uh, from this location out through the uh, spiral ganglion of uh, the cochlear nerve and up here uh, the cochlear nerve which is part of the vestibular cochlear nerve uh, goes back into the body at the um, uh, medulla we're going to go up through the remember almost everything except for smell goes to the thalamus all sensory information and the thalamus is the traffic cop or sort of the sorter 
of all incoming information and it gets sorted. Notice where sound is going to. It's going over to the temporal lobe. Um, so deep to the temporal lobe inside here. So that's what's going on. Part of it is going to cross over. Uh, some of it's going to stay ipsilateral. So contralateral means cross over. Ipsilateral means stay on the same side. And so this is uh, basically also uh, going to go through the middle. Do you see this right here? This is the midbrain, and this is called the inferior colliculus. So I'll pick it up again at our next part with that.